This serpentine spiral isn't what you might think. JWST has just revealed this mysterious object in more detail than ever before. And what we can see is incredible. We can see four beautiful spirals here, formed around a system of stars called Apep, named after the Egyptian god of Chaos Apophis. Before JWST, previous observations of this same object only showed one shell of space material. But with JWST, we can now see four, one expanding beyond the next in identical patterns. Try counting them to spot them all, but note the fourth one is almost transparent and at the very edges of Webb's image. In this video, let's get into the details of this image, what we can see here, how these awesome spirals came to be how it involves dust traveling at 2,000 miles per second, and even what the future might hold for an object like this. These shells that we're looking at here have been emitted over the last 700 years. At the center are two aging stars of a special classification. They're called wolf rayet stars. These are very hot, luminous, and rare stars. We only think about a thousand of these stars exist in the Milky Way galaxy, which contains hundreds of billions of stars in total. We know of only a few hundred binary pairs of stars that contain a wolf rayet star, and this is the only example we know of in which the orbiting stars are both WR stars. These stellar objects have lost all of their outer layers of hydrogen, leaving behind hot cores. They show high-speed stellar winds, and the known wolf rayet stars have surface temperatures between 20,000 and 210,000 Kelvin. JWST has imaged this type of star before, including this supernova remnant and this fascinating system surrounded by many, many rings of dust. But this new one we're seeing here certainly has a unique look to it. That very outer shell I mentioned had previously been hypothesized, but previous searches using telescopes on the ground could never find it. Thanks to Webb's huge mirror and sensitive infrared instruments though, it's now been revealed for the very first time. We now know this outermost shell is a whopping 4.6 light years across, which in everyday units is roughly 40 trillion kilometers or 40,000 billion kilometers, which is pretty big even in space terms. This brand new image I'm showing you is a mid-infrared image. It's made of light that our eyes can't see, but JWST can show us. It's light that's very good at penetrating dusty and gassy regions like this and revealing details that would be blocked and hidden to other telescopes, including the old workhorse Hubble. The JWST data here has also been combined with several years of data from VLT, the Very Large Telescope, which is on a mountain in Chile. Doing this also allowed the scientists involved to pinpoint how long it takes the stars at the center to orbit one another, about once every 190 years. This in itself is amazing because it's much, much longer than other binary wolf rayet systems that we know of. Orbits that involve a wolf rayet star typically happen in about 10 to 30 years. Another reason this system is so remarkable, during each of these long orbits, the two stars spend about 25 years close together, and it's during this time that they produce a lot of dust and material that's thrown off the stars, and as it's ejected from the stars, we have the repeating shells forming. This is similar to how the ringed star got its structure in that other wolf rayet system we previously saw from JWST, but on a much longer timescale. Those stars spend months close together, and these two spend years. This dust and gas production is not a calm or tranquil process either. The stars are whipping past one another and sending out dust at between 1200 and 2000 miles per second in a very energetic and violent process. It's also very thick and dense dust made of largely amorphous carbon, which is just carbon that lacks any of the fancy crystal structures that make up things like diamond or graphite. So it's more messy, like you might imagine things being thrown off of violent stars interacting with each other to be. This carbon dust tends to retain higher temperatures than other space dust, even as it coasts further from the star. 
meaning the dust is easier to see in the mid-infrared wavelengths that Webb can detect with its MIRI instrument. And this helps explain why JWST sees so much more here than previous images did. I do say higher temperatures, but it's still very cold and faint out there in space, meaning we really do need something like JWST to get this kind of detail in the images. Something else amazing that JWST helped confirm is that there is actually a third star in the center of the object too. So while I've been talking about two stars orbiting each other, with their strong stellar winds mixing and colliding for a quarter of a century at a time, producing these dusty shells, that's really a picture we already had before Webb. While that is all still true, Webb's data allowed us to update the models and simulations to really confirm this extra complexity in the system. We've kind of known about this third star since VLT observed the system and the innermost shell in 2018, but JWST led to updates in the geometric model that now give us a smoking gun that the third star is in fact gravitationally bound to the other. How did we know about this third star all along? Great question. The dust ejected by the two wolf ray stars is being sort of slashed or sliced by the third star. This massive supergiant star carves holes in each expanding cloud of dust and material from its wider orbit of the other two stars. Unfortunately, JWST just shows these three stars as a single bright point of light in the image at the center of it all. Even Webb can't resolve the individual stars. They're just too small from its point of view. If you're having trouble spotting the holes that I'm saying this third star carved in the shells, you can trace a V-shape from the bright central region to 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Or if you just want to see it nice and easily, you can use this nice annotated version of the image. That makes it a lot easier to spot this carved out hole. Alongside the image from JWST, we also got to see a super cool simulation based on the data, but combined with the updated models to show what the four dust shells look like in 3D. As we've discussed, APEP is made up of two wolf Riot stars orbiting each other, together with a third supergiant star. For 25 years, during every 190-year orbit, the winds from the two stars combine, producing and sending new waves of amorphous carbon dust out into space. So now we've covered what we can see in the image, what could the future hold for this violent but beautiful system? Initially, the binary pair of wolf Riot stars were more massive than their supergiant companion, but they've now shed most of their mass in these winds creating these shells. We think they're now in the range of between 10 and 20 times the mass of our sun, so still quite a lot bigger, but now less massive than the companion, which is 40 or 50 times the mass of the sun. Eventually, in the future, the wolf Riot stars will explode as glorious supernovae, rapidly and even more violently sending their material out into space. This may be accompanied with a gamma ray burst, one of the most powerful events in the universe, and they could even end up collapsing into black holes after the explosions. All in all, this will probably destroy the nice shell structure that we can see here, so we should enjoy this while it lasts. Although I should say this won't be anytime soon on a human scale. It'll be hundreds of years in the future, if not longer. I think this is an awesome image and a fascinating object out there in space, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of it too in the comments below. And if you'd like a JWST mug or shirt, there's a link down there too. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!